But first, this guy is gonna blow your mind. The Iceman has well and truly cometh. I'm Wim Hof, but they call me the Iceman. And that's because I'm doing all those crazy stunts in extreme cold weather. I climb mountains in the snow. I swim underneath the ice. Good swim. I'm not a runner, but I run a full marathon beyond the polar circle in shorts in January. I is the guy who is exposing himself in extreme temperatures. Cold. That's why I'm the Iceman. But Wim isn't just a madman with a cool nickname and an aversion to clothes. He's dedicated his life to exploring the limits that the human body can withstand. The Wim Hof Method consists of three pillars. Breathing, exercises, gradual cold exposure and mindset. And those enable you to learn to control your vascular system, cardiovascular system and your immune system. Basically, Wim reckons that a combination of breathing exercises and exposure to extreme temperatures holds the key to combating most illnesses. Even man flu. The thing I'm most known for is standing in the ice. I fully control my core body temperature, while the skin temperature is going down almost to zero. The official world record stood at one hour, 51 minutes. But Wim wanted to do better and chose an iconic landmark to do it, Times Square. Ginny, how can Wim survive a two hour ice bath in the thick of winter? The Iceman seems to have an amazing ability to withstand cold temperatures that would kill most of us. When we get very cold, our body diverts our blood away from our extremities and towards the vital organs that we need to survive. If our core temperature drops below about 35 degrees C, we can get hypothermia, which can lead to death. But if Wim can use his breathing techniques and meditation to fight off the frost and stave off hypothermia, he might be able to manage it. But it's a really tough ask. Wim had attempted this challenge many times before, but this one had an added complication. It was being broadcast on national TV. But life doesn't have to be this cold and you don't have to be so naked. <laughs> Why go for the 19th record? <laughs> and the guy was making fun. I said, if it is nothing, ah, well, here we are in New York. It's uh, freezing temperatures, but we have a great time. And a uh, human popsicle is right over here. With the clock ticking, was the Iceman's resilience beginning to melt? I had two hours of fighting going on within my head, within my body. And at the cold, when it hits upon you, it can be horrific. You lose control over your body. It's gone. It's not only numb, it's very, very painful. There is six, 700 kilos of ice around you, pressing upon you. You are not able to move. You're not able to do really anything. Which is dangerous. Because you or your body could collapse. If you don't have the proper training and do these stunts, you die. You easily die. Uh, so the danger is lethal. The danger is real. Despite the distractions of a live broadcast, one hour, 52 minutes, and 42 seconds later, the Iceman was victorious. <laughs> Told you, cold is a noble force. It brings you right over here. I'm not with my mind anywhere but here. <laughs> Get that man a dressing gown. Next, something the Iceman will possibly know nothing about. Working nine to five. Got the Monday morning blues. Need a little something to help you wake up. Ah, fucking hell. Yep, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Although a coffee would have done the job. Clearly some workplace stunts are meticulously planned, involving careful preparation and hours of practice. Others, not so much.
This accidental stuntman had always dreamed of a high-flying career. Dreams can come true. And that's lunch. But there's nothing worse than a post-lunch lull. This over-the-shoulder rubber band holder is aiming to fire things up around the office. Ready? Aim! Ah! Bullseye! Wait! Ah! Are you what? Ah! <laughs> what are you doing? He was time-wasting, obviously. <laughs> In Brooklyn, New York, this hire car company has got an unusual policy for returning its vehicles. There you go. Keys are in the ignition. I hope they took out the accidental damage insurance. Got a massive bush to trim, but it's half four and your mates are already down the pub. Time for some blue sky thinking. This clever Canadian has strapped a lawnmower to a tractor to make pruning a piece of cake. Hopefully, there was no one round the other side. Finally, you've made it to the end of another working day. All that's left to do now is relax, kick back, and enjoy the journey home. That is, if you enjoy sniffing other people's armpits. And just think. You've got it all to look forward to again tomorrow. Next, a bucket list stunt in full swing. Hi, I'm Matthias Giraud, also known as Super Frenchy. Remember Matthias? He's the renegade skier turned base jumper who likes to take on avalanches. But this time, he's taking on gravity. We only have a short time here, you know, on this planet. So if you want to knock things off your list, you gotta, you gotta do what it, you gotta do what you gotta do to make it happen. Matthias travels the world, ticking off bucket list stunts as well as dreaming up new outrageous ideas. All right, right in front of Mont Blanc. Hell yeah! One of our friends was like, "Oh man, we should totally attach a rope to another paraglider, lower it to you, you jump out and do a rope swing." And we're like, "Oh my god, sounds like a horrible idea, but we have to do it." <laughs> Matthias needed two paragliders for this stunt, so he called on Bam Bam, a tandem pilot who could carry him into the air, and Travis, a solo pilot who will be attached to the swing. See us right now, we're a thousand feet above that meadow. We have to trust each other's skills, we have to uh, make sure we're going to do the proper things, and if it's not done right, it gets really, really dangerous. Here's Jem. Now, this is a complicated stunt, and with quite literally an awful lot hanging on it. Now, the guy in the paraglider, he has to act as some sort of sky anchor for Matthias on his giant swing to be hooked onto. Now, that swing alone is going to be pulling probably 2G, and all that force gets transferred up the rope to the wings of the paraglider. It's a lot for a small craft. The thing is, he has to keep that rope taut, because if it goes slack, then it will suddenly jolt, and when that gets transferred to the paraglider, it could easily break the structure of it, and they all come tumbling out of the sky. This stunt requires so much teamwork and timing, and they're literally staking their lives on everybody getting it right. You have to make sure that each step is done properly so you don't endanger your life, and most importantly, the life of others. Matthias needed the perfect spot to pull this off and decided Columbia Gorge, near Oregon, would fit the bill. I hope you don't sink out, buddy. If you're close to the ground, it means that you can hit the ground. Hitting the ground journey doesn't end well. With the wind playing ball and their equipment rigged and ready to go, it was time to fly. Go time. Go time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, um, taking off with, <laughs> with a paraglider, you know, you have to trust him. He's going to get up to altitude. After that, my role really kicks in. Um, we communicate with Travis. But actually, get altitude first. Watch your drive. Watch your roll. Who's um, 
a little higher than us with the solo wing and the rope. Then he lowers the rope. He lowers the rope to us. Lower, keep it coming. Then I have to grab the rope, reel in the rope so I can get to the handlebar. Once I'm in the handlebar, I have to unclip my harness, but I have to make sure I don't slip out. Bam Bam kept asking me, are you ready, Matthias? And then I was like, yeah, ready. And then he communicated with Travis. So I was like, all right, fly away from us to put tension on the rope. You have to go for it when it's time to go. As I would jump out and rope swing under Travis, this puts tension on his wing. His wing is made to technically support only the weight of one person, not two people. This could collapse the wing. So I had to keep looking up to see what his wing was doing. Feeling the acceleration was, uh, was incredible. You feel just so energized and, 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 and euphoric. It's like, oh my gosh, it's so fun. But at the same time, you're so focused so you have your game face on and you look, you look extremely serious. But inside, it's all, it's all happy chaos. <laughs> <laughs> And once you you know you've landed safely and all your friends have landed safely, then it's time to go grab a beer. It's thirsty work watching all these madcap capers. Think I'll have one myself. Cheers, Matthias. Next, when your regular old stunts just won't cut it, it's time to take it up a notch. A trampoline, a human obstacle, I'm intrigued. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. That is hands down the coolest way to rollerblade. Although, actually, maybe these guys could teach him a thing or two. I mean, why just roller skate or surf when you can roller surf? I wonder what else you can do on a surfboard. Anyone for tennis? Bored with solid ground, this avid tennis player decided to test his skills on a wetter, more wobbly surface. Ouch! You cannot be serious. Trying to solve a Rubik's Cube tends to put most people in a spin. But this is especially true for 15-year-old Dutch breakdancer Justin Stomp. Level breakdance badassery. Finally, some impressive next level stuntage. When it comes to marking his territory, this little guy's well and truly taking the pee. All I know is I definitely don't want to be around when he needs a dump. Prick. Hey guys, I'm Jeff Bell. I'm a stuntman and comedian who does the most crazy videos imaginable online for fame and fortune. Oh, shit. Crazy doesn't even come close. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff Bell's part of a stunt troupe called Children of Poseidon and they've been crowned the Australian Jackass. 
So I got shot in the nuts with a spud cannon. <laughs> then there was another time where we went to the beach and we buried me up to my head and pepper sprayed me directly in the face. <laughs> the most painful thing you can probably imagine. And I'm sure the question on everyone's lips right now is, why on earth would you do this stuff? I can't help it, it's fun. And I guess the reason I do it is, it was really for the fans, to be honest. Um, I don't enjoy pain, but I enjoy the thrill. Everyone thinks I'm fucking insane. I mean, I can't swear, can I? No, probably not. And as insanity levels go, there was one stunt Jeff Abel wanted to attempt that was so outrageous, he knew it would be an instant viral hit. So I was driving around with my friend, we're in his car, and we just so happened to drive past this cactus. When we saw it, we thought to ourselves, this has got to be the, the worst thing we've ever seen. Like, this is unimaginable. And still to this day, I've never seen another cactus as bad as that. I'm talking like three inch spines. As soon as we saw that cactus, we thought to ourselves, that's the ticket, you know? You can't ignore something like that. So whilst Jeff's brain unfortunately gets the better of him, let's find out why this is a terrible idea. This is a seriously dangerous stunt and potentially fatal, but not for the reasons you may think. The spines are actually not long enough to puncture any vital organs. However, he will receive numerous puncture wounds, and that's gonna be exposing his body to serious number of pathogens that are on the surface of the cactus. That will lead to infection, and one of those infections may be tetanus. That's an acute disease of the nervous system, and a nasty killer. So let's hope he's up to date with his jab. Don't worry, Stacy. Jeff Abel's got his boxing gloves on. He's wearing goggles, and what appears to be Santa's shorts. What could possibly go wrong? I present to you, Cactus Body Slam. We came there with one goal, with one ambition, and that was to jump into that cactus. When I was standing on top of that car, looking down into hell's pit, like actually into the gates of hell, that's just what it seemed like to me. I was going, this is a very, very, very bad idea. I should not be doing this at all. No, no you shouldn't. Pull my legs over! Fucking pull my legs over! Zach, help me now! Help me now! Ah! 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 What the fuck have I done? This is a this is a terrible idea. So um, I just fell into it, and um, basically I was stuck there. Ah! Ah! I was like encased in this cactus, it was everywhere. It was like, I was upside down in this cactus and it was just like here, it was in, next to my face and it was just all in my legs and I was just, I couldn't move. Ah! 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 Pull my legs over, fucking pull my legs over. Zach, help me now. So instantly I start crying to my friends. I'm like, fuck, help me. Like, get me out of this cactus, get me. Out, like I was, that's all. I, that's all I felt at that point in time. I was just like, "Get me the fuck out of this fucking cactus now, now!" Like I want out. Help me now! Ah! 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 Jeff Abel was well and truly punctured, with over a thousand spikes stuck in his body. Once we realised that they were buried far beneath the skin, it was off to the doctors, and I had two nurses looking after me for probably about an hour or two after that, just taking these needles out. I had multiple infection sites all up my legs, um, my arms, my torso. I was on antibiotics. I was on, you know, antibacterial creams. The injuries I got were, were way worse than I imagined. Single-handedly, the worst thing I've ever done in my entire life. It's safe to say he'll not be doing that again. Honestly! From one prickly plonker caught in the act to a load more in a series of clips we've called Busted. Hello, hello, hello. What have we got here then? In China, a man has forgotten the fundamental basics of driving. Being inside the car. 
After using his car as a skateboard for 600 meters, the police easily catch up with him and charge him with endangering public safety and drink driving. Even though there wasn't much driving. A bit closer to home and in Scotland. I think we do. I think we do. This group of mates were out for some drinks when they came across this sloth stuck on the fence. Come <laughs> on, oh, come on. Right, uh, we'll let you do, we'll let you do. When you explain, why the fuck are you climbing the fence? I don't know. You don't know? What are you trying to steal? No, none. So you're climbing a fence for fun? Yeah, we're just getting up the road. I don't think he's going to end up on any most wanted lists. In the north of England, <laughs> they're attempting some drunken parkour. <laughs> Take your pants off, dude. <laughs> and underestimate how supportive bus stop roofs are. <laughs> being an idiot is one thing, but filming yourself being an idiot is a whole new league of stupid. <laughs> The video was a YouTube hit and led to him being identified by a local police officer, which landed him with an £800 fine. Ouch! <laughs> You're right. <laughs> In California, this base jumper is planning to jump from the Bixby Bridge. But the police spot the man preparing to jump. Those police. Don't even think about it. I'll put your back up right now. <laughs> We're so busted. Okay, I'm gonna do it anyway. Really? Yeah, yeah, here we go. Despite the warning from the police, experienced base jumper Steve stands on the edge of the bridge over 80 meters high. You're, I'm under arrest anyway. No, but the 47 year old base jumper reckons he'll chance it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I gotta do it. Now. What's your name? Shake your hand. Just stop. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Ah! Fly to freedom. Not sure that parachute can get you to Mexico, though. But right now, a killer kayaker with a seriously large pair of knackers. My name's Bren Orton and I'm a whitewater kayaker. I've never really set out to do anything more than just kayak and have a good time with my friends. And now we're in this crazy position where I do it for a living. Bren may be living his dream. But his idea of fun would be most kayakers' nightmare. Bren paddles over waterfalls. Big ones. I think the thing that I love most about kayaking, especially on big waterfalls, is just being part of something that is so much more powerful than you, riding down that, this incredible force of nature. And with large waterfalls come some very high risks. And I've had my fair share of bumps and scrapes, and um, at the moment that includes a broken back, fractured ribs, fractured eye socket, broken hand, um, broken ankle, uh, shoulder dislocation. Not put off, Bren's aim was to be the first Brit to take the plunge over Mexico's Big Banana. A 39-metre waterfall and the second longest drop ever to be paddled. It's huge, it's got a gnarly entrance and it's a massive impact at the bottom. For me, what made this really special is the fact that no other British kayaker has pushed this far in this direction of kayaking. But water's all soft and splashy. How dangerous can this be? With a waterfall this size, all of the dangers are magnified exponentially. I could be held under for much, much longer than on a smaller waterfall, and the impact is going to be much, much bigger. Right, if Bren is going to pull this one off, he's going to need some scientific salvation. Ginny! Anyone who's done a belly flop knows that jumping into water the wrong way can really hurt. It's really important for Bren to make sure that his kayak enters the water at the right angle, with its front profile as small as possible. He also needs to flatten his body to the kayak so his face and body don't hit the water as he enters. This will all make sure that he slows down gradually and the force on his body is lessened so he hopefully ends up in one piece. Bring it in, boys. But before Bren can hit the drink, he's got another challenge to overcome. 
to get into this waterfall, you have to rappel into it. Unfortunately, we didn't know how to rappel or do any of that stuff. And so we did what anyone would do when you don't know how to do something, and we turned to the internet. We watched a few videos, we did a few searches, read a little bit. Don't knock it, mate. That's my job. I was so scared of abseiling, but I, I so desperately wanted to do the waterfall that I, I pushed that fear aside and I did it. And the abseil was absolutely terrifying. That's the most scared I've ever been in my entire life. But we got past that. Having survived his crash course in abseiling, Bren was ready for the real challenge, the 39-metre Banana Falls. I took a few moments just to really clear my head, make sure my heart rate was low, make sure that I'm calm and I'm confident and I'm ready to do this. There are a lot of factors that I have to get right to enable me to have a safe descent of this waterfall. The first thing is that I have to enter at exactly the right spot. As soon as my angle of entry feels good, then I'm tucking up as hard as I can on the front of my kayak so that I don't take a huge hit at the bottom, and then I'm just waiting. The first conscious thought that went through my head as I'm running this waterfall was, bloody hell, I'm still falling. and then just the most brutal impact of my life. It broke my carbon fiber paddle, it broke my thumb. Are you okay? He can't give a thumbs up, but he survived the biggest drop ever paddled by a British kayaker. Bren, you're a total legend. This stunt should absolutely be left to the professionals. It takes a lot of time, experience, and skill to make this descent possible. And without that, it just, you couldn't do it safely and you would end up broken. We interrupt this program to bring you a news flash from Stunt News. There's an epidemic sweeping the globe known as the Bulls Up. The condition inevitably results in varying degrees of unexpected discomfort. Oh. Fuck. This balls up sufferer experienced an overinflated sense of skill. Oh. Followed by a pounding headache. Are you dead? I'm done. This sufferer truly believes he can perform a front flip while riding his groovy new hoverboard. Oh. But he's deluded. And also concussed. Unfortunately, balls up sufferers are unaware they have the condition. Until it's too late. After extensive testing, doctors have concluded that balls ups are much more likely to affect the chronically daft. Take quad biking on ice. Apart from looking like a dog chasing its tail, it's an idea he hopes will gain traction. Or maybe not. There's no evidence to suggest that balls ups are alcohol related. There's no evidence to suggest they aren't. <laughs> Tough crowd. The epidemic has also spread to our highways. This sensible, law-abiding motorcyclist was happily riding along when this happened. Here he is, harmlessly annoying the driver in the middle lane. One balls up later, and his expensive motorbike is laying in tatters by the side of the road. And he's mashed up his leg as well. Shame, eh? This is the end of the newsflash. Your usual program will now resume. Always fancied yourself as a bit of a stunt master? Here's something flipping awesome that's sure to impress your friends. If you've got the bottle, this is Stunt Hacks. Fancy a game of spin the bottle? Aussies Derek, Brett and Scott sure do. They've well and truly mastered the art of bottle flipping. In fact, there's almost nothing they can't do with a bottle in hand. 
or on a skateboard, or attached to a fishing rod. Nowhere is out of reach of their bottle-flipping skills. And with their amazing videos, they've built up a following over a million subscribers on YouTube. Oh, my goodness! Come on, get a home is insane! So, do you fancy becoming a flipping legend? Before you hit the bottle, here's Taron with the science behind the spin. So, this stunt is all about our pal Gravity and a good wrist action. Good wrist action! I'm going to be ace at this. Bottle choice is key. You need a plastic bottle with a flat bottom, which you should fill something like a quarter full with water. Grip the bottle between the neck and the cap. This will enable you to get a nice rotation when you throw the bottle up in the air. And here's where the wrist action comes in. As you throw the bottle up, give it a gentle flick with your wrist, which will send the bottom of the bottle spinning out and away from you. Now, here's where gravity comes in. Throw the bottle high. This will give the water enough time to slosh down to the bottom of the bottle and bring the water bottle straight back down. Because of the water, the centre of mass of the bottle is lower than it would be if it was empty. And that is the handy piece of physics that enables the bottle to stay upright and stable when it lands. So there you have it. And with enough practice, you could even end up as good as this mother flipper. Catch you on the flip side. Next, the stressful life of a high-flying stuntman. Hi, I'm Brad, also known as B-Rad from the stunt crew of P.O.R. Stunts. Oh, P.O.R. I remember those guys. The world's most dangerous stunt group, who like to inflict serious pain on themselves in the name of internet stardom. I came across the P.O.R. stunt crew through YouTube videos, and I ended up messaging them on Facebook, and uh, that's how it all started. Brad's now a certified member of the team. And there's one stunt he's always fancied a go at. The boat jump over a car. Which they've previously done, and it didn't end too well. Can you make a fist? Okay. Oh, uh, his, his shit might be broke. Yeah. So it took some convincing for JJ, the POR ringleader, to attempt it again. When I first met Brad, uh, he was pretty adamant about wanting to do this particular stunt. I was like, well, if we're going to do it, we got to do it bigger. Last time, the canoe capsized, and stuntman Pinhead Larry broke his wrist. So they needed to go back to the drawing board. To figure out, you know, uh, a better way of doing it, we looked at the, the video of the canoe stunt. If we're going to do this, we probably don't want the boat to twist in midair again. So we figured the flat bottom boat would make it so it wouldn't do that. And from there on, we just kind of thought, well, it should work. <laughs> so they ditched the canoe in favor of a rowing boat. Anything else? The ramp that we used was a lot bigger this time. Other than that, we we kind of went for it. There wasn't too much uh, math or <laughs> or, or much um, scientific uh, thinking involved. <laughs> Don't let Russell E say that. Got to say, these guys are suckers for punishment. They just. I don't know why they do this kind of stuff. I think they need to just kind of take a step back and think about it a little bit more, and maybe they might get less hurt. But it's all about that rope that is attached to the boat. And what you want to do is to do the jump, release that rope, and do a lovely landing. And if they don't release that rope, what's going to happen is they're going to go up the ramp, and then the car is going to keep going and just slam the boat back into the ground, and the guy inside it is going to be catapulted forward. So, hopefully, they figured this out. With the scene set, it was Brad's time to shine. I remember being sitting in the boat, and, and as soon as he hit the accelerator, I knew, I knew that I was probably going to go pretty far. Just judging on how the pull felt on the boat, I knew I was probably going to get sent. Uh, I, I literally, he overshot my camera. You know, it, it happened so quickly. Everything around me happened so fast. It was just like a flash of just moving. 
when he hit the ground, it was just dead silent, which is never the case for us as a group. We're always laughing and we want to add some humor to it. I remember looking over at the, at the jump and where everybody else was and thinking, holy crap, I am way further away than I thought I was going to be. I'm like sitting in the grass over here, like looking at them, thinking, okay, wow, <laughs> I went really far. All of us were terrified. That never happens. Can you bend your elbow? Can you bend your elbow? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Brad had fractured his elbow and had to go straight to hospital. But this did give him time to reflect on the stunt. Well, what I think went wrong was we maybe could have moved all of the soft boxes another 20 feet, and maybe I would have landed on soft boxes instead of uh, concrete. <laughs> I don't think we took into consideration the physics behind it. You don't say. Do I regret doing this stunt? Absolutely not. I'm so glad that we got that on video. Um, I'm really happy for that, and uh, it just, it's great. It makes me, it motivates me. It really does. So there you have it. The secret to being a successful stuntman is not to be downhearted by defeat. Although, knowing when to give up would also be a blessing. Mixing stunts and partying isn't the best idea, but bad decisions make great stories. To get any party started, you need to get the drinks flowing, like this barman in Germany. He's attempting to break a world record by making 17 Jaeger bombs at once. He currently holds the previous world record with 14. I hope everyone likes Jaeger bombs. Remember, your entrance is everything. And this American bro is certainly going to make an impression. <laughs> there goes your ride home. Why not try to impress the crowd with a party trick? Like this guy in the US who can open a beer Robin Hood style. Cheers! Yo, man, this house party is on fire. Yeah, man, it's lit. No, look, it's actually on fire. This party in Alabama heated up when the host set his driveway and basketball hoop alight. Good luck putting that out with your little hose. They also want to play with fire at this full moon party in Thailand. This woman is stepping up to the challenge of the flaming rope swing. Ah! but unfortunately, ends up being a hot mess. <laughs> Speaking of which, does anyone else smell burning? It's a shame no one will believe her. Her pants are on fire. In Jamaica, these dance moves are bringing down the house. Literally. Style it out, style it out. Melbourne. This hen party is bringing it to the table. Unfortunately, the table brings them to the floor. And if you want to try recreating the end scene from Dirty Dancing, practice beforehand. She's probably never felt that way before. And remember, don't invite your parents to the party. They might try to embarrass you. <laughs> This fraternity in Florida is celebrating Father's Day with a game of Father v Son beer pong. Not all heroes wear capes. <laughs> Who's got the DP? Well, that's your lot. You've seen a complex rope swing, some perplexing paddling, and the most mentally exhausting stunt ever attempted. Yet, it's life's simple pleasures. <laughs> serving up the most satisfaction. Zach, help me now. Help me now. Until next time. <laughs>